Welcome, I'm Mike, a Googler, a statistician, and I'm passionate about learning and sharing. Today, I'm a friend and I welcome you into my office. Today is a part two video. You've probably watched the O2C series, uh, which is a video about using pipelines, specifically Kubeflow pipelines, to do the steps involved in training an AutoML model with Vertex AI. Uh, what I figured to do is I'd share with you the question that a user sent in, and then we'll walk through this additional piece. I missed evaluation the first time using code. Uh, good catch. Uh, we're gonna compare contrast using the console for evaluation and using code to do evaluation and why you might wanna do that. So let's get to the question specifically that was sent in. Hi Mike, can I use the API to retrieve evaluation metrics from the trained model? First, the answer, absolutely yes. I'm sorry I missed this the first time, and I think we're gonna see that this is the great part about GitHub. I was able to squeeze this new section right into the notebook uh, without changing anything above it or below it, and you'll get to see how this works. So let's jump over to the notebook and revisit this section. All right, so last time we were in this notebook and we ran the section above here, a pipeline. And we eventually even looked at the section below, prediction. Uh, well, let's revisit the creation of the pipeline and what it made, and then look at this part we call evaluation. So we're gonna go over to our original pipeline in the console. I'm gonna click into it, and we see all these steps, like a tabular data set was created and that was attached to a data set and then a tabular training job. Uh, it was an auto ML training job. We gave it a budget of about an hour and it ran and that created a model. Now on the side, an endpoint was created and then when the model was done, it waited on the endpoint waited and then it deployed the model to the endpoint. Let's click the actual model part. And what we see is it actually is an asset in Vertex. This link takes us over into models. And by the handy naming we've been using, the three parts, the notebook name, the data set name, and the timestamp, we see O2C fraud under models. And when we click it, it's just like the other AutoML models in the O2A video and the O2B video. Uh, we immediately are taking to a tab that has evaluation metrics, things we can use to evaluate the performance of the model. And we've talked about that a lot in the original video. Uh, what I want to do is show, well, let's pretend like we wanted to automate something and we really needed code to gather some of the information on this page uh, to make a decision point. Maybe our pipeline needs to decide uh, it will only deploy if the model meets a certain threshold of uh, the area under the precision recall curve. So to do that, going back to our notebook, coming up here and we see our pipeline finished running, it's done, evaluation. Now, we just saw how to evaluate in the console. That's great, a great feature of AutoML to be able to do that. Uh, this is the video you're watching and these are the parts of code that you have to do. Now, since it's a pipeline, that ran outside the notebook and it created that model. What we need to do is go kind of fetch that model. So we're gonna do that using the AI platform, the Vertex AI API, uh, the model part, and have it list all the models that have a, I'm gonna use a filter, the name. Uh, well, in this case, I can filter it to a single model. I give it the exact name, the notebook, the time, the name, fraud, and the timestamp. Uh, that's gonna be perfectly unique. So when I run these, Look at the resource name. I get all the information down to the individual model ID. Notice it ends in 6672. And right back over here, if I look at that O2C model in the list, it ends in 6672. Now that I know the address of my model, I can set up a model client to interact with that model to fetch this evaluation information. I do that using the same API with the model service client and I give it kind of the address to the API. And then these four lines of code basically interact with that to find the uh, ID of the evaluation of the model. So first I'm gonna to go to the model client and say list all the model evaluations for that specific model we just returned. I'm then gonna say go grab the first evaluation you see and because there's only one, 
Uh, we only ran it once. And then grab the name of that evaluation. So that's just an, another parameter. You got a model, and then after the model, you got an evaluation. And then go back to the model client and say, go get the model evaluations for that iteration. Let's run that. And now we have stored in this variable, get eval, all the information on that page. Now remember, in the console, there's a ton of information here under this model. You don't just have static numbers here. We could actually change the confidence threshold up or down in the numbers update. That means that the JSON value that's returned in that variable uh, contains uh, essentially numbers every 0.01 from zero to one uh, of this entire range for this model. Uh, we don't want all of that. We're gonna retrieve pieces of it. So let's go back over to our code. First, the overall model. Let's get the part that we concentrate the most on, the area under the precision recall curve. It's so important because we have imbalance between there's very few fraud cases and lots of non-fraud. We're gonna run that. We're gonna get the number, what was that? Three or four nines and a six. Now, if I go to the console and I put this back at 50, uh, that's close enough. What we see is this is rounding it to one. So already through the API, I can get very, very precise. That might be important if I'm comparing two models. Uh, I'm grabbing that value. Uh, I might also want to grab the actual numbers from the confusion matrix. I could have a case in this case of imbalance where I don't want more than say three false positives. Well, here I've got two, that's a good model. I would pass it if that were my criteria, but I need to return these numbers in the API. The way I do that, is that same get eval variable, I need to parse the information from the confusion matrix. Uh, first, I need to know the size of the confusion matrix, and that's the number of label values, in our case two, fraud, not fraud. I grab the metrics, confusion matrix, annotation specs, the labels, and I look at the size of it with the length function, and I know that that's gonna come back as two, and I'm gonna iterate over the two things, zero and one. And then for each of those iterations, I'm gonna print out essentially a, a row of that confusion matrix. And I put in some text in my print statement to make it pretty. And when I run it, what I see is a true label of zero has predicted labels of 28,368 zeros in the zero place and two ones. And if I go back over to the console, that's the exact numbers I see. Similarly, 16 and 37 for ones in here 16 and 37 for ones. It's the exact same information. I mean, the console is using the same API to fetch this information and just present it uh, graphically in the web page. But here, I've got these numbers. I could go back to my pipeline and make another step saying, here's my decision rule, and or another component, step in the pipeline, and here's my decision rule, and if this passes, then deploy the new model to the endpoint, or replace the old model, stuff like that. Uh, I can also, at an evaluation, look at it by slice. This is a classification model. I could look at it at the level of each label value of fraud, not fraud. Uh, back here in the model, if I click zero label, it has area under precision recall curve of one. If I click on the fraud, it has area of 0.814. If I go back and I grab list model evaluation slices, it'll return those metrics for each label uh, of the model. And when I do that and print it out, again, I iterate through those slices, there's just two. I can print it out, I put a little text in to make it pretty. A label value of zero has almost a one, it's rounding. And a label value of one has 0.81357. Back over here, 81357. Um, this is great info. Uh, I can see why the user asked this question and I love that they did. It's the great part about being able to have content on GitHub is you can update it. Uh, this is pushed out there now and the next person that comes along will never know it was missing. Uh, this video is being published as a part two to the original video because I can't edit existing videos. Um, let me know. Uh, did this work out for you? Did you like this type of information in this follow-up? If you did, click the like button. That's a quick way to say thanks. 
Uh, if you want to give a little feedback to others who are going to click and say, is this worth watching? Leave a comment. And ultimately, if you have feedback, go over to get, uh, click the issues on this uh, repository and let me know like how I could make this better or different or what you noticed that could make this more useful to you. Uh, and with that, I want to say thank you. Let's work together to make the practice of AI and ML more collaborative, accurate, and approachable to a wider and more well-connected audience. Have a great day.